All right. Hey, hey. Let's wait for some people to come in here. Two participants. All right, hey, hey, ladies. Just letting some people come in. Hello, hello. Feel free to turn on your video if you like. Just make sure that you guys mute yourselves as you come in. That's all I ask. Wow, look at all these lovely ladies popping in. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Ah. I did you want. Finish? All right. Thanks. Make sure you guys are muted. I think most of you are, except for me. I know Mackenzie's just coming in. I don't see anybody else popping in so far. All right. How is everybody guy doing, guys? You all made it through the eclipse. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Very nice. All right, so if you guys, let's see. Seven of you here so far. I'm trying to see if we have any more coming in. Now I want to be respectful of your time as well. So I see Jessica's got her video going. So that's always nice to see lovely faces so I don't have to look at a black screen. Mackenzie says in the chat, hey, hey, hey girl. So excited to have you guys here with me tonight. Cass is driving home from her event. How did it go? Just give me a thumbs up. Don't get it. was good. Good. Yay, yay. I love it. It was quiet at the shop today. We had a few visitors, but that's okay. That is okay. It is. Okay, I'm going to mute myself again. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay. All right, so we are going to get started. I don't want to be disrespectful of your time. So I think we are recording here. So if you guys want to pop in and chat, uh, make sure that you unmute yourself. But for the meantime, I am going to get started. So I want to welcome you guys here. We hold space for all of these beautiful women coming in. Um, I know that we've had a few new moon and full moon ceremonies that we've had a couple of men joining in, and that is absolutely wonderful. But for tonight, since I don't see anybody, oh, we got one more coming in. Since I don't see any males popping in, I'm going to address this like I normally would as women. So, um, for those of you who don't know, I am Casey Barbarito. I am the founder of It Starts With You, and I work with overwhelmed women, helping them to step into their true, authentic selves. And, you know, gosh, I started this journey myself being a overwhelmed woman. I mean, who is it, right? Um, hopefully she can get in here. I noticed we got one lady that's kind of stuck here. But I started this community again as an overwhelmed woman myself and really questioning, you know, what it is that I wanted to do with my life. The place that I was in at the moment, I, I was overstepping people. I was not holding true to who I was. And it was really a struggle for me. And I spent quite a bit of money trying to figure out, you know, what I was missing, what I was lacking, because there's always that question, you know, um, what am I not doing right? You're looking for answers somewhere else. And I figured that since I spent a lot of money to get myself in a good headspace, um, that I would start this community for women, giving them, you know, helping them with the tools. And honey said, I have a really bad lag. Anyone else? Guys, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if we're having trouble here. Everything good on this end, Case. Okay, thanks. I don't know, honey, it could be because you're in the city and things are a little crazy. I'm not entirely sure. 
So, all right. But I, I really wanted to give back to all of the women. And I know Valinda, I love that she's here because she's been with me through this journey since like day one, when I went to her with this crazy idea of, Hey, guess what I want to do. So, um, yeah, it's, we've come quite a ways in the past year and, um, you know, I'm just super excited to share this with you. You know, I'm a spiritual coach as well. Um, and this is where I get to help you guys spiritually. This is where I help you step into, um, who you are as a divine feminine woman, because I want to ask you guys, so feel free to unmute. What does that mean to you guys being a divine feminine woman? And you can pop it in the chat too. Feel free to unmute. Don't be scared. I don't like, I promise. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Jess. Thank you. Jess is driving, so she's not going to do the video, but a uh, okay. divine feminine woman means to me that I stand in my power and I don't let others' energy or, or ever, others' <laughs> energies or um situations affect my being mm -hmm. that's what i have thanks anybody else want to share add to it so i'm not going to give my definition but i pulled a card just as you were getting started tonight and i pulled the divine rebel Ooh. <laughs> so i'm going to read that so it says, inspired by divine grace, I use my heart, wisdom, and free will to create my own rules for how I live. I follow my guiding light to reveal my true soul essence. I place my faith and respect in the supreme healing wisdom and protective power of divine love. I embrace the difference and eccentricities, I can't even speak, within that will allow me to live freely and fully as my true self. This inspiration and empowerment is essential in recognizing the fulfilling my authentic life path. I love that. I love that. You gave me goosebumps all over. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's really the energy that exists within all of us. It's a softer, nurturing, intuitive, and empowered energy. It's bold. It's racy. It's sexy. It's the whole thing, guys. And we don't we don't take advantage of that anymore. We really repress it. It's overshadowed. We push it back. It's not right um, to do that, or at least that's what we're told. You know, we don't get bring this into our daily existence um, and let ourselves connect with self on a deeper level and, you know, really re reconnecting to goddess and the earth and all of those things. So I love that you guys shared that. Does anybody want to jump in quickly here? Mackenzie said in the chat, I'd say confidence in my womanhood and creativity in all aspects. Yes, yes, absolutely. I don't know. I know Honey's trying to come in and she is in here twice. Honey, you might be having an issue because you have more than one device trying to come in maybe. I'm not sure. All right, so with these ceremonies, what I generally do is I call on the elements. So um, this is just a way of asking the universe for help, for guidance, and really allowing, as women, how often do you ask for something? Not very often because you put everything else in front of your needs. So I go through, Jessica says, never. Yes, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> But tonight I'm going to ask you guys, maybe this is something new for you, maybe not. I know a lot of you guys have been with me before and just simply opening your heart and your mind to something a little bit different. So um, I'm going to get started. I've got you guys as best I can in my home space. I'm not used to going um, live and doing these new moon and full moon ceremonies from home, but since we had the eclipse today... Here we are. So, I, but I'm excited that I was able to open this up to all of you. So, all right, here we go. Guardians watch towers of the east, guardian spirits of air. I summon, stir, and call upon you to witness these rites and guard this circle. I bid you hail and welcome. 
All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just lighting a candle in all of the areas. So guardians of the watchtowers of the North Guardian Spirit of Earth, I summon, stir, and call upon you to witness these rites. Guard this circle. I bid you hail and welcome. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the West, Guardian Spirits of Water, I summon, stir, and call upon you to witness these rites. To guard this circle, I bid you hail and welcome. All right, Guardians of the Watchtowers of the South, Guardian Spirit of Fire, I summon, stir, and call upon you to um, witness these rites. I bid you hail and welcome. All right, spirit in the center, I also ask for you to sit with us. Um, I invite in spirit guides, archangels, ancestors, any deities that anyone might be working with, especially Gaia and the Great Mother herself, asking you all to come with good intentions for us as a collective and as a group. All right, so now that we got that started, gosh, today was a solar eclipse. So feel free to pop it in the chat or unmute and let me know how your experience was with the solar eclipse. Was it everything you thought it would be? Was it hyped up? How are we feeling? How were you feeling today? <laughs> I was feeling energetic. Yeah? And even more so afterwards, I was just throughout the whole time from probably about a little after two till about four o'clock. My body was just lightly, lightly vibrating the whole time. It was just so, it was peaceful yet energetic at the same time. So. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it was so beautiful and eerie at the same time, I think. <laughs> Anyone else wanna share? It was peaceful for me, and I took the chance to meditate a few times today to, as well. Nice. Very nice. Good. I'm glad. Proud of you for doing that. All right. Thank Mackenzie you. said she's been working on illuminating fears and doubts. Good, good. I mean, it was felt by everyone. I think that's fair to say that we all had some sort of energy. We were feeling some sort of way. And um, yeah. I've been super excited since the minute I woke up this morning. It was a little different during the eclipse because I think we were at the shop and it was weird because, you know, we were supposed to have all the things in Watertown and it was a little quiet. It was weird. I don't know. But anyway, so um, it was that period of deepening the darkness for it was about four minutes of darkness and the temperature really dropped. And I think that temperature drop was what got me the most. It was cool, my body tingled, and I just, I had to walk away from everybody else as I was out there, and I was just feeling it, because, you know, they were all talking and chitty-chatting, and I was like, oh, my body, uh-huh, I feel you. So, um, I just had the tingles, and I walked away, and I, I drawed from the earth, and I breathed in, and I looked up, and in that moment that I closed my eyes in the darkness when I opened, it was light. And I was like, woo, that was just great. So the eclipse offers us a chance to heal from the past. It's a chance to shed your skin. And I know a lot of you guys have seen snakes this past week. And it's an opportunity. Take that as a sign. I know snakes kind of ick people out, but take it as a sign, okay? As, it, as a collective, we don't always pay attention to the signs around us. The universe is offering us a huge sign to just let go of what doesn't serve us. And the new moon re represents new beginnings. So this is a very unique opportunity for you guys. It is like amplified by a hundred. So I encourage you guys to utilize this. If you haven't done anything with the energy yet today, go do something with it. So um, let's see, sorry. My just chat just moved. So I wanted to make sure that somebody was in here um, that needed to be in here. So put that energy to work, okay? Um, 
I want you guys to move on from your ties to the past. Let it go. This is a time of goodbyes. Let all that shit go. I know a lot of it you didn't ask for, but let it be something that was a lesson for you. Okay? Everything happens for us. I know some of it's really shitty and we didn't ask for any of it, but I hope that you took something from it. Okay. So say goodbye to all that crappy thing. It is a time for new beginnings. Um, unlock those fresh opportunities. Okay. It's time for personal growth and renewed focus on your aspirations. Okay. What is it? I've been asking you guys all week. If you are in the zero, 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 it starts with you community. I've been giving you guys prompts all week long and asking you guys to go deep. So that was me kind of leading you into this new rebirth time. So I've done the same work myself. I've asked the questions. I think there's some of them are going to continue on. But this morning I asked you, what's in your head? Who are you listening to? Are you listening to somebody that's telling you're stupid or you're dumb or you're too much or you're too loud? And meh, meh, meh. So um, I want you guys to let that go. Okay. Just let it be. I want you guys to really start lifting yourselves up. And I'm going to give you guys some um, affirmations after this. I'm going to post it in that group. So if you are not a part of that group, make sure that you go find that group. Um, I... Um, if one of you guys, maybe Belinda, if you could put the group link in the chat for the group, um, this is a woman only group. So if I have a Samsung SM in here, I'm not quite sure who that is. And April just came in. Um, again, this is a safe space for women. Not that I don't allow guys to, you know, be a part of the spirituality in this area, but in that case, that is just a woman's only group. So um, who are you guys hanging around with right now? That's going to make a difference. That's going to make a huge difference. Are they lifting you up? Are they encouraging you? Are they celebrating your wins with you? Or are they tearing you down and telling you that you're not enough? Okay. So if that's the case, I encourage you guys, go find somebody that's going to lift you up. Find a community, utilize our community, um, and do that too. You know, this is a time to embark on like a transformative journey. And I want you guys to be there for each other. This is a time to be bitterly honest with yourself and really look into that, um, look into that, like the shadow work a little bit. And what is it that you want? What do you value going ahead? So really take the time and go into that darkness a little bit. The new moon, yeah, the prompts have been synchronized with how I've been feeling and trying to focus my energy on figuring out who is the authentic me. That's a great question. Who is the authentic you? How many of you guys can tell me who the authentic you is? Right now, I can only see, oh, I can see a couple of you. Hey, Alyssa, didn't see you pop in there. All right. So, yeah. Thank you, Valinda. She popped in the, um, I think that is the group link. So thank you so much. But, you know, take the time to go into the darkness, go inwards, and figure out what your goals are. What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are, you value, are your values? What are your intentions? And really getting present with the things that you want in your life. So when I say getting present, what does that mean for you? The here and now and not the past. Yeah, yep. What else? You guys feel free to unmute or if you wanna pop it in the chat. Getting present means getting off of this thing, okay? Off the cell phone, because so often we get caught in a rabbit hole. We are trying to hide from something. We're trying to run away from something, you know, and even we encourage our kids to do it sometimes. 
But I want you guys to be present and get a glimpse of what is possible because you all are destined for greatness. Did anybody ever, when they were little, think that they were meant for more? Yeah? When you were little, you had big dreams and aspirations, right? Yeah. So I encourage you guys, get that innocence back. What is it that I want to do? Maybe what it is that you wanted to do was something, you know, that you don't want to do now. You know, I want you guys to explore that a little bit and allow yourself, give yourself permission if you need to, because sometimes we just need somebody to give us permission. And I think somebody on this chat reminded me of that. Um, maybe not just in the past couple days here, uh, give yourself permission to let those things come to life. Give yourself permission to try new things, you know, do something that's extra juicy. Just go out there and take action on something fun. Maybe it's having a date night with a significant other or, you know, doing something a little extra spicy to liven things up, you know, go find those opportunities to grow. Let go of the extra stress. Let go of the worry. Let go of the overthinking and step into who you were meant to be. Maybe you don't know who that is, but when's the last time you tried something scary? I want you guys, I want you guys to answer that. When is the last time that you tried something that was scary or that made you get outside of that comfort zone? Saturday when I did a 10K. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That is awesome. So how did you feel accomplishing that? I'm pretty sure I seen the post. You made it through it. I did. I did make it through it and I made it through in less than two hours. I didn't have a goal set. I didn't have a time set. All I said was I'm going to finish it. Awesome. And I have, I'm having problems with my ankle and I pushed through and I did it anyway. And I kind of fell. There were like seven of us from work that all went together in a group and I fell behind them a little bit. And I was okay with that because I knew I had to for my ankle. And then I kind of lost sight of them. And then all of a sudden they were back there in front of me again. And I said, you know what? You are stronger than this. You are stronger than that ankle. And you're going to meet back up with them again. And I did. And the seven of us crossed within seconds of each other. I love that. So it was great. It, it was a great feeling to be able to say I accomplished it. I may have finished in 26,134th place out of 29,000 something people, but hey, I wasn't first and I wasn't last. <laughs> okay. But in that, in that, what's the word I'm looking for here? In the overall scheme of things, how many people didn't even try? Lots. Uh -huh. I couldn't even begin to imagine how many people. Yeah. So big high five to you. I am so proud of you for doing something outside of that comfort zone and just proving to yourself and overcoming that thought of, I can't, I love that. Thank you. It was, it was a great opportunity to just do some soul searching while I was walking those six miles. Beautiful. <laughs> it's freezing to death. I might add, yes, I am in the South, but I was freezing. I was going to say, wait a minute, girl, you're in South Carolina. Don't need me that coldness. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> cool. Thank you for sharing. When Anybody walk else? Go ahead. It's when you walk over a six mile bridge and it's 48 degrees outside and windy, it can, it gets cold. I can imagine. <laughs> Challenges you what you're, you're able to accomplish. Anybody else want to share? When's the last time you did something that scared you, that got you out of your comfort zone? I honestly can't even remember. <laughs> hmm. Is there something you've always wanted to try and just remember you've talked yourself out of it? Yeah, I mean, like crochet and stuff, like doing stuff like that or doing like craft shows. I've talked myself out of doing that, like, because I've taught myself how to crochet. So it's like, I mean, I have gotten a lot more confident in my work. I've made yeah. like hood toddler blankets that are like animals and stuff that have come out really nice but then I have that fear what if it blows up and it's just me and I'm already thinking oh. about being overwhelmed before I'm there that is fear of success mm -hmm. that's what Lang told me in my reading actually ah <laughs> he's on to something girl uh, yeah 
<laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let yourself really just try it. Just try it. At least you can say you did it. You don't have the shoulda, woulda, couldas. Right. And you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen is your life just opens up to all these new possibilities. And I know you're going outside of the comfort zone a little bit because you've been in the shop. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, well, this kind of is a way out of my comfort zone, actually. Ah, <laughs> look at that. Itself, really? <laughs> I love that though. But how do you feel overcoming that fear and being here and stepping into yourself spiritually? It feels good. Yeah. It's I open. Like I've I even wrote a couple letters today to, to burn to people. Good. Yeah, there's a I've lot done. of strength in that. Has anybody done that before that has written a letter to somebody? Maybe maybe you didn't have the courage to present it to them, or maybe it they didn't deserve your time. I know I have. I think I see honey kind of going me, but I don't know. Yeah, there, there's great strength in that for sure because it gets it out of here and it gets it onto here. So good for you. Mackenzie says, I have. Yeah, definitely do that. Definitely do that. Burn it. Let it go back to the earth for sure. Anybody else? Last time you did something uncomfortable. Guys, go do something uncomfortable. Wow. <laughs> okay, Casey, I've got one. Okay, go girl. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh I work with kindergartners and uh I ha some of you know about Mr. Stick. I don't have him near me, but I have a little twig that um I was missing my daughter. She's away at school, hadn't seen her it's back in I don't know, early February. So I went outside in the snow. We're here in the north. We have snow here still, or did have snow. Anyway, um I made a big heart in the snow. I broke off a twig from the, uh, the weeping willow tree that we have. And I started making videos with holding onto this little stick to music, just whatever Pandora was playing. I played it loudly and I was taking a picture and reali realized, oh, I can make a video. I shared this with the kindergarten teacher I work with who um, I wasn't sure how she was gonna receive it. And she allowed me to share it with the kids. And one of the kindergartners who's very cerebral said to me, Mrs. Amelia, is that a real stick? I said, Yes, honey, it is. And for his privacy, I won't say his real name. And he's like, but is that, is that your hand? I said, yeah, I am holding it. But how how does it move? And it was this whole thing, like, I'm sharing this. It's a stick. It's my hand. They enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I now have at least 38 videos and or pictures on my phone with the adventures of Mr. Stick. And I have shared Casey's seen Mr. Stick. Mm -hmm. You just met Mr. Stick. So, and he, he got to witness part of the eclipse. He didn't have his glasses on, so it was only partial. He didn't, but it's a short little clip. Yeah. But it's something that you can share and connect with the kids. It's something fun. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's kids, adults too. Just oh, the, yeah. it, the look, even watching your face. And I know Honey's seen Mr. Stick too. Others have seen, just the look of like, oh, but oh, it's fun. And the whole, it's, I don't know, it's relatable and it's just a way to connect and without without pressure without yeah, pressure absolutely absolutely i just i love that you are willing to share that and just you know be you and have fun it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. something grand or elaborate it can be something simple and earthy a stick <laughs> yes like, I'll, I'll find him i'll bring him. he's in the kitchen right now he's not out here yeah i say okay. he's not really a he, mr yes, stick will have his debut right here oh, on yeah. the solar Eclipse, <laughs> new moon ceremony. I love it. <laughs> I'll bring him. I'll get him. Yeah. All right. Cool. But I, I encourage you guys all to take a chance. Do something different outside of that comfort zone. You know, step into who you were meant to be because each one of you were put on this earth not to be mediocre. You were put on this earth to do great things. You know? Yes. Yes, you're going to have things that are going to hold you up. And you're going to stumble and you're going to fall, but you are here up until this point, every single day. You showed up, you came here and got on this Zoom, you know? Um, I encourage you now, I want you guys to stay in your lane. 
okay? I'm gonna explain this, however, because I don't know how I feel about this. When I say stay in your lane, stay in who it is that you want to be. You have this vision, okay, of who you are meant to be. You have this in your heart, in your soul. You have this energy that burns deep inside of you to do something, to be something, to do something more, to go out there and to take those crafts and go to that craft fair, you know, put those blinders on. I don't care what anybody else has told you. Stay in your own lane. That's what I mean. Don't listen to what's going on over here on the right. Don't listen to what's going on over here on the left. I want you guys to be authentically you and stop friggin' apologizing for it, okay? Yes, I swear, I apologize, there we go. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but guys, don't stare in the opposite direction. Stay in your lane. Keep focus on what it is that you are meant to do. Um, usually with this, I kind of, I have these beautiful cards and they were gifted to me by Holly. She is our shop owner. For those of you that don't know with the Wellness Cottage Crystals, they are the divine feminine. Okay. So if you want to look at this Oracle deck, it is by Megan Watterson. So it has some beautiful artwork in it. And it also has, um, all sorts of different women in here. They could be popes. They could be deities. They could be, um, let me think of what the word is I want. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, I'm not getting it. Warriors. They could be all sorts of different things. So I pulled a card earlier and I want to share the story with you. It is Pope John, Joan. So most generally, um, no matter what your belief is here, I just ask you to follow along with me and just kind of feel through the story and see if anything resonates with you, okay? So don't, don't mind me, I'm gonna take my glasses off so I can see. Pope Joan, and I'm gonna show you her picture. You guys see that okay? So she is the pontiff of possibilities. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. So who is Pope Joan? So Pope Joan embodies the truth that all things are possible. Hopefully you guys believe that. According to popular legend, there was a female Pope who reigned for three years in the ninth century. She was a brilliantly highly educated woman who entered the Catholic Church in Rome by cross-dressing as a man so she could be with her lover. Intelligent and quick-witted, she rose through the ranks of the church hierarchy and was eventually elected as Pope. Three years into her reign, she was in a procession from St. Peter's to the Lateran Ray. Lateran in a in a lane once known as Via Saccara, the Sacred Way. Her true sex was dramatically revealed in the middle of a sacred way when she gave birth, surrounded by shocked and astounded crowds. One legend said that she was killed immediately and buried on the spot where she had given birth. Another said that she lived to do penance for her deception. And her son, who became the Bishop of Ostia, had her entombed with honor in his cathedral when she died. Regardless, her name was removed from the list of popes. All her subsequent cardinals had to sit on a throne with a conspicuous hole in the middle of the seat to get confirmation of sex before being named as the next pope. On the 13th, in the 13th century, Jean de Malay wrote a chronicle that contains the first written mention of this unnamed female pope. Inspired, it inspired a wildfire of interest that spread throughout Europe. To this day, the legend of Pope Joan is widely believed, especially among Christians. 
when your soul selects her card, we can so very easily get caught beneath the glass ceiling of what we think is possible. But the truth is that everything is possible. It's hard for us to imagine just how much the divine wants for us in our lives. Much more than we could ever hope or dream for. Of Pope Joan reminds us that even if we think that what we want isn't possible, it actually is. Or even better, there is something our soul wants for us that will give us more than what we could even think to ask for. Pope Joan is a sign to trust in what you believe about yourself, not what any else, anyone else believes about you. Trust what's within you. Don't rely on what you see around you or what you hear. Have faith. Know that the circumstances you are currently in are transformed from within. Begin to believe in a vision of your life. Cultivate the capacity to see it to really imagine it with all of your senses and you will live into the day when it exists as the reality that now surrounds you. Hope Joan, her right hand is held in the papal blessing, a Christian mudra of benediction. The two fingers that point downward represents Christ's dual nature for both fully human and fully divine. The human ego is limited and lives beneath a glass ceiling. Joan demonstrates to us that for the soul, the glass ceiling doesn't exist. Trust in what your soul knows is possible for you. This is what Joan reminds us of. So there is a meditation. There is something that you can meditate on. And it says, what helps me remember that all things are still possible for me. And I'll, I'll repeat that. What helps me remember that all things are still possible for me? And the intention being that all possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. So how many of you guys face limitations on yourself? All of us, we think we can't. Um, society reminds us all the time that, you know, we have limits and that things aren't possible and you have to, you know, be some superhero to, you know, make these things happen. You guys just have to believe in yourselves. I don't want you guys to be afraid of these things. So did anything resonate in Pope Joan's story? Was there something that stuck out to you guys? Casey, the, uh, the, this isn't directly what you're saying, but the part that's a part that stuck out was the son still showing respect for his mother whether it's just because he had life or he was able to continue on with his life that he remembered her even for even her though, greatness. Well, for her greatness. For, yeah, for her for her sacrifice too. With, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I have a I have a son of my own and we're going through some things. Not terrible things, not awful things, but enough that it makes me glad to hear that for them. Yeah. Synchronicities, <laughs> you hear exactly what you need to hear. Exactly. So, what you need, leave what you don't. I tell you guys that all the time. So, guys, you have this opportunity, and I'm going to pull another card here. So, this is from my other deck. This is from my Talisman Oracle. I use this quite a bit. And this is just going to be a card for the collective to go along. So, maybe this is something for you. Maybe it's not. I see you. Come here, you little booger. You can't run away. Intuition, intuition, Alyssa. Oh. <laughs> what? How do you guys feel when I say intuition? Good. Do you listen to your intuition? I'm beginning to more. I embrace it. 
You embrace your mm-hmm. intuition. So tell me more. Yeah. How do you embrace your intuition? I listen to myself more. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of experiences lately. I've seen my neighbor's aura. Nice. So, um, I talk with my spirit guides. And I just, I'm learning to not overthink. Yeah. Because I've always been a huge overthinker. So would you mind sharing one thing that you recognize that you overthink if you're comfortable? Everything, honestly, I have to be like in control. Mm -hmm. I I need to know A, B, C, D, like, and I think about every possible outcome that could happen and plan for that outcome. Absolutely. Yeah, that is classic overthinking. (laughs) So that's not helping you at all, is it? No, and I have started to be much better at just letting things be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not it. Control is an ego thing, for sure. And not just for you, but for everybody else. We need to know things now. We need to have things now. And, you know, using your intuition helps you to release that ego and help notice that things are not such a big deal. Um, Mine used to be doing the dishes. Oh, my God. I would just bitch at my kids like, oh, my God, you walk past the sink 20 times a day. Blah, 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 blah. And I would lose my mind. And when you use your intuition and you kind of are grateful for those things, it's not such a big deal anymore. And the overwhelm goes away. So with this intuition, this says you are wide awake and able to perceive a higher level of awareness that helps you recognize secrets and subconscious intention. The intuitive beetle, and there is a beetle on this card. These are an absolutely beautiful deck, by the way. If you haven't seen these or if you want these, um, Talisman Oracle um, by Nora Pascaliva, I believe. This is the deck. So um, the intuitive beetle is using the third eye gate to see through the prism of distortion. Um, I would say that, you know, society distorts that view. The answers you are seeking will come from within, from your divine knowledge and your inner wisdom. Seems to be a pattern here. Starts with you. I'm just saying what I'm saying. (laughs) Your intuition will help you read people's body language. If you are present, I think that word's come up here, and their facial expressions. If they're in disagreement with their words and actions, Allow time and space to practice putting your newly found feelings into words, but know that your present situation will benefit you significantly from your keen intuition. So you can meditate on this too. When you feel like you're in a tricky situation, okay? Focus on the image of intuition to awaken your third eye and enter the realm of higher consciousness. You can rub your forehead gently and imagine opening up your third eye. I am awake and I see. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So is there anything that you, in the past two weeks with between the um lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse is there anything that you guys started to see um can i talk on here yes absolutely (laughs) hi i also realized i sent like a private chat to Alyssa instead of to everyone oh but like (laughs) one thing that i've been facing a lot right now is like any insecures or doubts that I have around my art and it's kind of like similar to Jessica I it's not like the success but it's just the final product and like perfectionism I guess um so I've noticed that I've been really trying to work through those things and like I can notice like in my subconscious a lot of things coming up on why I feel that way and the way you're talking about social media it's like I love watching tutorials and everything, 
but I put a comparison on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not even being present with my own art or my own skills um, and my own intuition because I'm just like trying to be someone else's. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what I've noticed. I, I Honestly, this eclipse has been really good for me. I love that. But um, can I just give her a little shout out? Her art is friggin' amazing. If you guys haven't seen her, go check her out. <laughs> Um, but Mackenzie, I want to tell you something. Compassion is the thief of joy. Okay. Compassion. Comparison. Words, Casey, they're hard. Mackenzie knows this. (laughs) Yes. Comparison is the thief of joy. I want you, I, I know you're very spiritual. I want you to feel through that. And I know um, Chas isn't on here anymore, but I know you painted something for her and you gave her great joy. So use your talent yeah. to lift up. I hope I did. Yeah. <laughs> you did. I was on the other end of that. I know that you did. Yeah. You know, don't don't let what others do dictate who you are because you are as unique as a snowflake. You bring in a vision that is only yours or you create someone's, you help to create someone else's vision. So girl, go with it. Right. Yeah. That's what I've been working through. It's been a lot of, um, a lot of like tough working through things, which is good though. It's like illuminating all of those insecurities and doubts that I have instead of kind of ignoring them and pushing on, I'm really trying to work through them. So thank you. Thank you for that confirmation too. You are most welcome. Yeah. Step outside of that comfort zone. Do these things guys. Absolutely. Anything else? All right. So I did come up with um, a couple things here. So I came across this ritual that I can give you guys. It's best done before sunset and conveniently here it is. The sun is starting to go down for the second time today, or, you know, the darkness is coming, sorry, for the second time today. Um, But I encourage you guys to cleanse your aura, you know, whether that be with an essential oil, or um, a incense, or some sage, whatever your choice is, and a paper and pen, a candle, a bowl of water, and I can post this after, um, a crystal that you don't mind getting wet, and some directions. So light your candle and start by cleansing your aura or whatever it is that you're using for a cleansing tool. Start at the top of the head and work your way down your body all the way down to your feet. And the part that a lot of people miss when they're cleansing, don't forget the bottom of your feet. Don't forget the bottom of your feet because that's what you guys use to ground. So um, when you're meditating and you take your shoes off, make sure that you cleanse your feet. So Aries is ruled by the head, so we want to pay particular attention to that as you cleanse. So there is a little saying in here, and I will give you guys all the replay. I'll make sure that you guys get this too. So if you want to go back, or if you want me to pop any of this in the chat, I can do that as well. Why don't I do that right now? Um, Or I'll get it ready, and then I'll go through it. Okay, so we're going to put that in the chat. I'm not going to send it. It's too long. Of course it is. Copy. Paste. Okay. So what you do is you go through, you cleanse, you say, I open to the loving energies that flow within me and around me. I ask these energies to join me as I cleanse and remove all that is heavy, all that is stuck, all that is stagnant, and all that is no longer needed. As I work around my aura, my energy is lifted. It is vibrant. It is beautiful and heightened. I'm cleansed and my energy moves freely throughout my body. My heart openly and willingly gives and receives love. I am now standing in my purest light. Uh, Then you use your candle or your aura cleansing tool to cleanse your entire space. 
So do your office, do your house, whatever it is that you do your room, whatever it is in, in invite in light and love. So make it a place that is safe for you to dwell. It's safe for you to call the space your home because you've cleansed and renewed. So it is a perfect time to do that. You can take your crystal and you can do heart drumming. And we're actually going to do that heart drumming meditation um, after this. So the meditation is going to activate your heart energy so that you can be in a state of receiving and receptivity. So once the meditation is complete, take your piece of paper and write down 10 things that you wish to manifest in your life over the next 18 months. And I feel like that's too long, but use your judgment. Either a year or 18 months, year and a half. Once you have your list, state your desire out loud to yourself. Allow the vibration of your words to resonate around you. Take your paper and begin ripping it into strips. Take each strip and place it in the flame of your candle. When the strip of paper gets too hot or is burned enough, drop it into the bowl of water. This mirrors the idea of releasing and allows your intention to be sent out into the universe. Take your crystal if you're using it. Make sure, please, that it's a water safe one. You don't want to melt your crystal. So if you're using a crystal for intention, just make sure. Don't, don't say, Casey, you have melted my crystal. Make sure you know. Swirl your finger in the water, stirring it three times clockwise. So your energy centers, um, all of your chakras, they rotate clockwise. Leave your bowl of water in the sunlight for about an hour. You guys can do that tomorrow if you need to, since we're running out of light. But while your bowl is charging, you know, reflect on any messages that come up for you. Take some time to look within um, discard the water and the papers, dry off your crystal and, you know, keep your crystal close to you because you've sent that intention into your crystal. Okay. And I will put that into the chat here. Make sure that you guys copy and paste it somewhere. I will also put it into our, oh, I just smudged some words together. So my apologies guys, if that one little spot doesn't make sense. But I will put it into the, it starts with you, it's still too long. Bear patience with me here. Okay, let me just put it, it's still telling me it's too long. I will put it in our group, if that's okay. Everybody good with that? Yeah, okay. Everybody, anybody not in the group, I think you guys are all in the group, whoever's left, because I know we've had a couple of people leave. All right, so you guys ready to do some meditation? I will also put those affirmations out there for you. All right, so what I ask you guys, I want you guys to get comfortable in your chair. If you have shoes on, make sure that you take your shoes off. I want you to plant your feet firmly on the floor. And as I said before, this is going to be a drumming meditation. So you're going to be beating on your chest a little bit. I don't mean hard. I just mean it's it's um, it, it's almost kind of like a form of tapping. And I know that Patty and I talked about this a little bit today. It, it popped up at the shop and I'm like, how funny is that that we're doing this? So this is going to help you encourage the flow of life force energy going to guide you through it. I'm going to guide you through it, but just relax a little bit. I ask you guys to get comfortable on a cushion, back up against the wall, whatever works for you. And when you guys are ready, I want you to close your eyes. Taking a deep breath in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. I want you to place your right hand over your heart and just take a couple of deep breaths. Breathe deeply into your belly. 
just settle your mind. Settle your body. And on your next exhale, I want you to let out a nice sigh, letting it all go. Keep breathing with your right hand over your heart. I want you to see if you can tune in to your heart. Listen for your heartbeat. Being really still and quiet and tune into the beat of your heart. As your heart beats, it's an indication that you are on the path that you're meant to be on. You have a reason for being here. Your beating heart is a connection that you have to your body to your life force energy. This energy that flows freely inside of you. Feel the electricity hum through your body. Feel it flowing into your heart. becoming one with the beat. Remember to breathe. Go ahead now and relax your arms. Place your hand on your knees with your palms facing up. This is a position of receiving that you're in right now. You are receiving beautiful energy from the earth and from the heavens, from the world around you. Imagine this energy flowing through your fingertips, up your arms, and into your heart where it radiates out like a star. The star is shining in all directions and you are one with all of the stars. You are made of stardust. Allow yourself to receive it. Receive the divine energy. Now I want you to take your right hand and make a light fist, putting it back on your heart and begin slowly drumming or beating your chest just above your breasts, where your breastbone is, gently beating on your chest. Feeling the energy as it enters this space. Keep going. You are drumming your energy into your body. Recharging your life force energy. It's recharging you 
replenishing you, helping to wake up your body. Keep drumming on your chest very gently. You can speed it up or slow it down. Remember to breathe. You are charging your energy just like a battery being charged and electrified. Feeling the energy course through your body. Feel this incredible energy that is within you. Strengthening. And intensifying. Strengthening your spirit. Restoring your soul. And bringing the love that vibrates from within out into the world. Keep drumming. I know your hands are getting tired, but keep going. Activating this life force energy is allowing your unique energy out into the world. Your energy is unlike anyone else's on this planet. As you beat your drum, connecting with your unique essence, with your unique spark, with your unique purpose, you're opening up your energy centers in your body. Connecting to earth and sky. Connecting to the heavens and to your higher self. Feeling your heartbeat. Feeling your tapping as it breaks up stagnant energy. Letting go of the energy that's been keeping you sluggish, that's been keeping you stuck. Allowing it to break you free. Free from anything that's been holding you back. Feel that stuck, sticky energy shifting and moving out. Keep drumming. Allow yourself to go at your own rhythm. Breathing nice and slow. On your next exhale, release that energy. Let it shift out of you. On your next inhale, I want you to bring in fresh oxygen. Fresh nourishment. On your next exhale, I want you to let out a sigh, make a sound, 
whatever it is that you need to do, let it go. Let it come from inside of you as you're beating your chest. Feel that breath. Feel that noise. Let it vibrate through your body. Don't get caught up in your head. Just allow it to come out. Let those sounds go. Continue beating your chest, strengthening and recharging your vitality. I want you to slow it down now. Coming to a stop. Letting the energy go from your hands. I want you to rub your hands together. Feeling the energy between your hands. Feeling that life force energy. Taking a deep breath in. I want you to pull your hands apart. How does that feel? Setting them slowly on your lap. I want you to come back to your body, noticing how it feels. Taking a deep breath in, enjoying the moment. Notice in your head what you feel. Notice in your heart what you feel. Notice that life force energy moving through your entire body. What do you feel? As you come back, stepping into this room, I encourage you to step into your power. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes if you need to. Open your eyes. Your heart beats for something. It longs for something. What is it that your heart longs for? What is it that you want to do? Who is it that you want to become? Guys, it's limitless. What's holding you back from greatness? So this is the death and rebirth. Whatever that is that's holding you back, let it go. Step into whatever it is. Stop listening. Stop comparing. Just step into that space. Into that heart space. Stay in your lane. We talked about this. This doesn't mean, you know, you can't do whatever it is. Stay in your lane. Keep focus on whatever it is that you want. So guys, feel free to unmute if you want to. How are you feeling? Feel lighter. Yeah? Good, good. Let that life force energy in. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody have a hard time with it? No, you guys are good. You're going to go out there and rock this next um, period between now and the full moon. 
want to hear you guys coming in and telling me all of the things you know that you guys put on your papers that you put in I got a bit emotional but in a good way I love that love that and, and that's meant for this because a lot of times we don't we don't quiet we don't listen to our own heartbeat we don't just sit and dream anymore we there's a greater plan guys doesn't mean that your your life is going to be free of hardships but you know what staying in your lane you kind of you're not tolerating that harmful dynamic you're not letting that overwhelm suck you in you're not letting that ego take over you are simply being loud, you're being proud, you're you're being who you are, and you're not apologizing for it. So does anybody have anything that they want to share? I know we're kind of closing a little bit early. We're 20 minutes ahead of schedule, and that's okay, because I know when we are in person, sometimes we get off on a tangent. <laughs> and, you know, Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Each new moon and full moon ceremony is a little bit different. It is whatever strikes Casey in the moment. So, <laughs> sometimes goddess takes over. Sometimes I have it written down. So Casey, um, Mr. Stick is here. Ladies. Hello, this Mr. Is Mr. Stick. Stick. <laughs> Mr. Stick. He doesn't talk. He's a stick. Oh, my bad. Usually. No, 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 you can say hi. No, you can say hi. He just isn't going to say hi back. That's no, really I, got cool. you. I got you. It's a stick. It's a, Maybe it's you stick. need to feel his life force energy. Maybe he's screaming to get out of there. <laughs> I can't tell you I did. So oh, okay. I, 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 well, and it wasn't all pretty because he's a stick. And, well, the stick's not on the tree anymore. And that means he's not really a stick anymore. Or he's just still oh. a stick, but not alive anymore. Yeah, gotcha. that was hard. And, I didn't know that was going to happen, but it did. And my hand, my hand is recovered, but he's not. And he's okay with it, I guess. But and it's a stick. It's a stick. Anyway, but what I wanted to say is I do feel lighter. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a rough week as far as yeah. like being all over the place. And people I've been around, whether it's people I like to be around or people I don't like to be around. And some of them have been just kind of like, what the, who are you? And why are you? And even those littles that I'm around and they just kind of like, they, they just, they just take it all because they don't know what to do with it and they have it. And yeah. it just, it's there. And I used to work in special ed in this time of year, or this time of year, like full moons or um, other atmospheric astrological things would happen. And they would be the calmest, most normal acting and the kids that are normal would not be. And I experienced that this week. I experienced that with myself too, with it. It's just, it, it's been a week. So, um, but I, I'm glad you're back, Casey. I, I, can I say that too? <laughs> Thank you. So I'm glad you're back, back too. No, I get what you mean. And it, it was simply, I think, getting lost in the energy because I don't know if you guys paid attention to any of the news or any of that or anybody else's fears around you and you start to question yourself. And mm. I, I think that is slightly what happened. However, I also think the universe is also testing me to see if what I've healed, I have actually healed because I'm noticing the synchronicities in there and they're resurfacing. And I'm like, oh, F, where'd that come from? Why am I feeling this way? And I'm like, I thought I dealt with that. And I'm like, you know what, universe, I have dealt with that. And I have put that to rest. And that was where I needed to step into my own power. And I needed to let that fear go. And I needed to just be me. I needed to stay in my own lane. <laughs> so um, I, I, I really came into that this morning. I woke up, I, I had dreams and just things were popping in. And I got into the shower. And that's usually when everything pops in for me. It's like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, whoa, slow down. And I was frantically writing. So if you guys watch my live, I was like, all over the place. <laughs> it was a good thing, but I I had that time of reflecting and it may have put me into the darkness for a slight bit in the past couple weeks, but it also made me realize there was a lesson in it. Something happened for me and not to me. And, you know, I took responsibility for that and I didn't blame others. I tried not to anyway. Um, but just realizing that, you know, some things need more work and that's okay. 
and some things actually are healed. So um, guys, be gentle with yourself. Thank you for giving me the space mm -hmm. for that and bringing that up into my my recognition. My That's not the word I want. You're bringing it to light for me. There we go. So, yeah. Anybody else feel a little wonky during this eclipse? Anything out of the ordinary happen that, you know... Any realizations? I'm stronger than I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of strong. Different stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, if we are done here, I guess I'm going to close up our corner. So I want to be mindful of your time. So. Would you like to see some of the things I've made? Uh, yeah, I would. Quickly? Yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that is so flippin' cute. It's a hooded cute. blanket and I put beads, I like beads are on it too. I made it for my niece. And this one's in the yourself. Order. The cat. That's cool. That's like oh, those hoodie, nice. the, what are they? Are they Snuggies? What is it called? The ones that have like a hood, it's, it's like a a, bla a little toddler blanket with a hood, so they can yeah, wear it. Yeah, kind of like a one of the towels. Those yeah, are cool. I made a little skirt. Oh my god! And a little so toddler cute. purse. Oh my gosh, girl! I have never seen anybody make any of those before. Why are you not out there? <laughs> it takes me a good, probably close to ten hours, nine and nine ten hours to do one of these blankets. Yeah, yeah, that wow. is awesome. You have a I may need you to send one of those down south. <laughs> I have an owl one too that I made for my son. Uh, Melinda has grandkids, so I'm. <laughs> what kind of going to challenge are you up for? <laughs> okay, side hustle. I've, I've also made like their um, it's a hooded scarf. Like it's like a cowl neck type of thing, or hooded oh, turtleneck cool. they're called for like right. winter. So it's got the hood. Or you can take it off when it's got the neck warming piece. That's cool. I made a couple of those this year too, but Mackenzie said those are out. really cute. And thank you, everyone. I think thank she's you <laughs> out here. So yeah, that is awesome, girl. You got skills. You all have skills. Something unique. Awesome. Thank you. You are very welcome. Thank you. She's also got really cool hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. I noticed it the other day. Yeah, I still like it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, so guys, anything else? No, we good? I'm I'm glad I did this today because I was hesitant, so I'm glad I did. <laughs> Yay, we are glad to have you here too. We're always excited to have new faces. And the nice thing about doing this virtually is that we can pick up anybody from anywhere. It's not just limited to the shop. So, you know, that that's the cool thing. So I really hit me this morning. I'm like, I am just going to do this for free this month. And anybody who paid is on the next circle round. And I'm like, we're just, I felt the need to be with whoever wanted to spend the time together. So, yeah, I hope that. Thank you. This was helpful for everybody and you got something out of it. So I'm trying to figure out, am I really in the darkness? I see you guys, but I can't see myself. I'm like, how dark is it in here? Because no, it's not. So my room is, yeah, my room is getting dark too. It's getting dark. I don't have any lights on. I got candles around me. So, all right, ladies, I want to be respectful of your time. So we are going to close the circle. So spirit, thank you so much for sitting with us tonight. Um, thank you for your guidance. So spirit guides, archangels, ancestors, deities, thank you. Great mother, I bid you fail, fail, fair. They should be so used to me and my tongue tied. So they're probably all laughing around me. I bid you hail and farewell. Guardians, watchtowers of the north, guardian spirits of earth. I thank you for your presence in this circle and witnessing these rites. I bid you hail and farewell. Not the candle off here. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the West, Guardian Spirit of Water, I thank you for your presence in the circles and witnessing these rites. I bid you hail and farewell.
Guardians of the Watchtowers of the South, Guardian Spirit of Fire, I thank you for your presence in this circle. In witnessing these rites, I bid you hail and farewell. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the East, Guardian Spirit of Air, I thank you for your presence in the circle. In witnessing these rites, I bid you hail and farewell. All right, guys, thank you all for taking time out of your evening to be here, not just for me, but for you. Thank you for taking time for yourself. And, you know, I appreciate and love each one of you guys. If you haven't been told lately, I love you. I love you. I hope you guys all know that. And um, I bid you all hail and farewell. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Silly. I'm so silly. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. You too. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.